Hello and welcome to Take Another Look, Your Eye on Public Art in Albuquerque. I'm your host, Tony Dallaflora. 2013 was a busy year for the public art program. In addition to celebrating its 35th anniversary, the program continued to grow its collection. You may have noticed a new piece of art in your local park, library, or even streetscape. Several new and pending pieces were the result of a citywide sculpture project initiated by the Albuquerque Arts Board. The board, in its wisdom, decided to spread the wealth around a little, so it commissioned one piece for each of the city's nine council districts. Of course, all the behind-the-scenes work was done by public art staff. Uh, so with me today is Brendan Picker, project coordinator with the city's public art program, and one of the driving forces behind this project. Welcome, Brendan. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, first of all, how did this, uh, this is one of the larger projects that you guys have done in terms of multiple pieces, obviously. How did this come about? Um, it's, I think the discussion started um, at the end of 2008. There was okay. a conversation at an arts board meeting about um, the economy was kind of slowing down at that time and um, part of the mission and the purpose of the program is to not only promote arts in right. our community but also to provide uh, economic opportunities for artists. Right. So. Um, the conversation started as the economy was slowing down. How, you know, the arts board wondered how can we help artists. Mm -hmm. um, so they decided to finally, after a couple conversations, they decided to commission nine new sculptures, one for each city council district, um, mm -hmm. and to put artists to work. So right. it took a few years to kind of get off the ground, but um, now we have lots of sculptures that are in process and some that are completed. So yeah. Now who um, they had to make a lot of decisions early on. For instance. Um, how big, a, how wide a call to do, who they would invite, and what did they end up doing in terms of who was who was allowed to present proposals? Uh, they decided to keep the call pretty local, so only new, uh, artists residing in New Mexico were allowed to apply. Okay. Um, and uh, and the each the the budget for each sculpture is thirty thousand dollars. Okay. So it's relatively a small budget right. um, for a for a sculpture. Um, but if you multiply it by nine, it's actually quite a big chunk of money right. um, flowing into the economy. So right, right. So um, how many <clears throat> how many proposals did you ultimately receive for this? We received ninety nine ninety nine uh, submissions. Um, not necessarily proposals. The uh, application requirements only required um, some images of past work, their resume, and just a brief description of what sort of sculpture they, they might propose. Okay. Um, so we got 99 submissions from artists across the state, uh, wow. which is a pretty large pool of artists. I, yeah, I wouldn't have figured that there were close to 100 sculptors in New Mexico. Oh, I'm there. sure there are tons more, actually. More than but, that. Yeah. Well, they the would be involved in public art anyway. Sure. Right? Yeah. Well, um, for folks who don't understand, um, if they haven't seen the show before, they don't understand how the art selection process works. Kind of walk us through sure. that, how you finally winnowed this down to the finalists. Um, well, each public art project uh, requires a, a committee. So there's usually a couple arts board members on the committee. Um, somebody from the user agency, so say it's a project in a library, we'll have somebody from the library um, serve on the committee, uh, a neighborhood representative, and usually like a landscape architect or some other sort of arts professional serve on the committee. So this committee was actually a really large committee. We had one representative from each of the nine city council districts, obviously. Okay. We had four arts board members, um, and we had representatives from the libraries, from community center, and um, from parks. So it was a pretty big committee. Um, and they took the 99 submissions that came in and they narrowed, um, they narrowed it down to 18. Um, by the way, the artists were, uh, they were also asked to rank their top three sites. So we had the nine sites picked out, the artists could pick their top okay. three. Right. So, the, so the committee basically narrowed it down to 18 artists um, and then assigned two artists per site. So we had you know, two artists okay. um, per, per site, yeah. Okay. Um, so, so what you're saying, instead of doing a, a separate committee for each project, you just did one, one big giant huge committee. committee. Yeah. That has to be, uh, having sat through committee meetings and seen the process, that had to be a little unwieldy, I'm um, thinking. To uh, it, it can, it's always a little bit unwieldy trying to herd a group of people <laughs> from across the city into one room to sort of right. talk about art and make these sort of decisions. And this was definitely an even bigger committee. So it, um, but we got the job done. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so we assigned two artists per site, and then those two artists per site were actually paid a small stipend to create, uh, to flesh out their proposal. Okay. So right. they provided image, you know, sketches and images. Um, they provided a detailed budget and a, a narrative about what they would what they would actually build out the site. Okay. So. Now, how were the the uh, the sites selected? How did that was that a separate committee or how did that work? Was that up that to was um, the sites were selected by the full board. Um, so the entire arts board um, went out one day and drove around the city to all hmm. the city council districts and just looking at city facilities like parks and libraries and community right. centers to figure out where there might be some holes um, where you know a, right. a site might need a public art piece um, and then each arts board representative also worked with their respective city council district or city councilor um, and sort of narrowed down the, the sites to the nine that they were actually picked okay yeah. well, I'm assuming the city councilors were all on board with this or did you have any did you was that another step that was that, um, well each arts board um, member works with their city councilor to um, they kind of inform them about what's going on with the program, and the city councilor, in turn, you know, shares information with the arts board member. So, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about the sites in a little bit, and uh, but first of all, it's I, I saw the list of um, artists that you did eventually select, and I recognize several of the names. Some of them are very well known around here. Ed Hathaway, for instance. Uh, uh, Nora Naranjo, Morris, Karen Yang, people have done a lot of work, especially in the public art realm, and then some uh, people I would never know their name in a million years, but uh, new and up or emerging artists or whatever. How, yeah. uh, tell me about this mix of artists a little bit. About yeah, the, I mean, the uh, arts board um, was definitely open to emerging artists applying. So it didn't just have to, it didn't, it didn't have to be established artists. It could be, uh, well, like I said before, any artist residing in New Mexico could apply. Um, so with 99 artists, we had some that have a couple pieces in our public art collection, and there right. are some that this is their first public art project. Um, but it's been really fun sort of working with some artists who know the routine and can sort of guide themselves through the process. And then there are some artists where it's interesting to kind of hold their hand a little bit and walk them through yeah. what they have to do to actually yeah. get this sculpture in right. the ground. Yeah. Well, let's talk, um, again, some of the names. Ed Hathaway, uh, people would know his work, particularly from Tingley Beach, yeah. I guess. Yeah, he has he five pieces at Tingley Beach. They're called Bosque de los Sueños. Um, it's a series of sculptures there. His, his work is pretty... Um, Iconic. If you saw it, you'd probably recognize it. Whimsical, sort of, would that be another word? Whimsical is one word. <laughs> I'm not sure if he necessarily likes that word, but yeah, they're sort they're of whimsical. Fun. They're, they're fun. They're, fun they're sort sculptures. of organic, and um, they, they play with sort of found objects, and um, then he, you know, adds things, and so. Yeah, yeah it looks, it, his stuff looks like he's had a lot of fun putting them together for sure. Yeah. Um, Nora Naranjo Morris, of course, probably most famous for doing one of the pieces of the Cortes Centenario mm -hmm. Memorial at the uh, Albuquerque uh, Museum. Museum. Yeah. yeah. And what has she done other stuff in the yeah, collection? Yeah, she, um, she has a couple prints in the collection and also a couple smaller sculptures at the Albuquerque Museum in the sculpture park in front of the museum. And um, she's, a, she's a really well-known artist and um, she has a piece at the National Native American Museum, Smithsonian, in Washington, oh, right. D.C. Yeah, yeah so she won that. an award for that in 2007, I believe. Yeah. So she's a really great artist, and it was really, really fun working with her, too. Yeah. And what was, the, what was her piece? Um, um, her piece is called The Guardians, and it's a set of three core 10 steel sculptures. Um, they reference the landscape, they reference some of the architecture from the neighborhood, um, and they're sort of meant to be um, guardians of the park and of the neighborhood um, and actually her piece is the one that was um, most recently finished and we're having a dedication ceremony on February 15th Saturday okay. right. at 11 a.m. at Altura Park at the sculptures so she'll be there along with some other people from uh, the Arts Board and other city officials and okay. it's a public event so yeah. Yeah, people come out for that and they can find out about that stuff they can send for your newsletter oh yeah program, that's right? probably the best way to get all the up-to-date information on our yeah. program is to sign up for the e-newsletter okay. which is on our website all right mm -hmm. um, again Karen Yank is another name um, a fairly prominent artist in mm -hmm. these parts tell me about some where people might have seen her work before um, they probably have seen her her work um, on the pedestrian overpass over I-40 as you're heading um, uh, Let's see, near Coors. So Coors and oh. I-40, uh, there's a overpass and it's sort of these arcing yeah. um, Corten steel um, shapes and 
Um, also in the in the sort of median between Coors and I forty, um, there's another sculpture of hers there too. Okay. So right. and she's she has public artwork um, regionally too. I know she has a project in Colorado Springs, that's finishing up right now. Um, her sculpture is actually completed. It's in storage right now. Um, it's going into Academy Hills Park in the Northeast Heights. Um, but Academy Hills Park is going under some renovation. So once that's complete, um, there's a spot dedicated for her sculpture to oh, sort okay. of cap cap the renovation and complete the park. So. All right. Um, one of the other names on here is uh, Michael Metcalf from Silver City. How mm -hmm. did you, where, had you heard of him before? Did you yeah, he, he's actually an artist. Um, he is the artist who created the piece um, Energy of New Mexico. It's the two sort of spires, um, spiral towers at Louisiana and I-40. Oh, um, right. So okay. that's his work. Okay, okay. Um, okay. So this, this piece for the Citywide Sculpture Project is, is definitely smaller than that, um, smaller in scale. But you, if you looked at both of those sculptures, you could tell it was the same artist. So okay, yeah. Well, let's. You had mentioned before that some of these are installed and some are still in process, and some are even in storage. What's mm -hmm. um, where? Uh, uh, let's give us a little idea of the locations of these and what and what ones are already up and where sure. we're going to expect to see some new ones. Um, dis in District One, at the future site of the uh, Unser Central Library, um, which just broke ground a couple weeks ago, I think. Um, is an artist named Greg Ritchie, and he's from Placidus. Okay. And his piece is uh, titled The Beacon. Um, it's going to be sort of a, a steel tower with um, pieces of dichroic glass that will reflect light, and right. it'll sort of move and be sort of a kinetic piece. Okay. Um, he hasn't started that project yet because we're waiting until the library is finished okay. right. uh, to get started on that. Ed's um, is already up. Right. Ed's is up, Death District 2. That's at the roundabout at the Manal Extension and Indian School, sort okay. of behind the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. Um, that one's called Mon Monument. Um, District 3 is uh, in, at Alamosa Park on the west side, and that's an artist named David Wagner. He's from Santa Fe, okay. and his will be called Star Chair. It's sort of this oversized bench um, with some tempered etched glass and um, etched images of constellations okay. and that kind of thing. Um, John Northcutt, he's an artist from Las Cruces. His is at Cherry Hills Library. This is District 4. It's called Los Libros, and it's a set of three kinetic sculptures that reference the turning pages of books. Okay. Um, so it's a movable sculpture. Um, District 5 is completed. That's by, um, it's at Vintana, Vintana Ranch Park by Rachel Stevens oh, yeah. from Las Cruces. Windows, yeah. yeah, it's called You Are Here, and it's a series of five steel um, painted windows that each window is unique, um, sort of referencing New Mexico architecture. And she wanted to talk, you know, think, talk about the views that you see from the park of the mountains and um, sort of give a sense of place. Okay. Um, District 6 hasn't started yet. That's an artist named Ryan Hennel. He's from Albuquerque. He's sort of an emerging artist. Mm -hmm. um, he does, this piece is going to be called Rock Formation. It's sort of a land mm -hmm. art piece with a boulder mm -hmm. and some steel. Um, District 7 is Altura Park, like I mentioned, by Nor oh, right. Nora Naranjo Morse, the Guardian. So okay. um, District 8 is Karen Yank's piece. That's at Academy Hills Park, and that's once the park is done with the renovations, we'll install that. Okay. And then District 9 is um, Michael Metcalf, and that's the, it's called Suspense, and that's at the Jean Bellamo Community Center up in the Northeast Heights. Okay. Yeah. So what's the, what's the uh, full timeline for all these being in place? Do you have um, idea Four of them are already mm -hmm. installed. Two, two more are in the process of being installed and should be finished soon, so that, you know, that leaves um, maybe three more that still need to kind of get started. So, but each artist kind of, you know, we put them on contract and then, you know, <coughs> Depending on the site and depending on the artist time, it can take, you know, usually projects take about a year. Um, mm -hmm. Rachel Stevens, she finished hers in a matter of months. So, um, but sometimes it goes over a year, so. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, we're going to have to, to wrap up here in a minute, but uh, I wanted to mention again the newsletter and also where, where can uh, viewers go if they want to find out more about this, this particular project? Um, we can always start off on our website, um, cabq.gov forward slash public art. Um, we have a page, it's project updates page, where you can kind of check in and see what projects are in process and um, how they're progressing. Um, the public can always just email me if they want, um, bpicker at cabq.gov. Okay. Happy to respond to any questions about the project or other projects or okay. the program itself. All right. um, but the best way is to sign up for the e-newsletter. We always put invites to dedication events. We put calls for art. So if artists want to apply for future calls, we put those there and just also project updates and that kind of thing. 
Cool. So. Very good. Very good. Well, uh, it's been, a, again, as I said, it's been a pretty momentous year in, uh, in 2013. Hopefully 2014 is going to continue in that way. And, and I imagine we'll be, they'll be being close to 900 pieces by the end of this year or somewhere uh, in that? Pretty close. Yeah, pretty we're, close. We're, yeah. We're, we're over 800 now. So and we just we always have around 25 projects in process. So it's always... Yeah. As they get finished, we'll just keep adding them to the collection. Yeah, yeah. great, great. Well, um, I want to thank you, Brennan, for being here with us, and and uh, and uh, thank you for all the good work that the public art staff does. And I'd like to thank you for joining us on Take Another Look. I'm your host, Tony Della Flora, and we'll see you next time.